Alright, first of all, I'm gonna show you guys what cool under pressure is all about. I am guaranteeing a strike on this shot, okay? Watch. Cool under pressure. Seems like every time Backstreet Boys are in Atlanta, they're hanging out with us and we're talking. So we came down to 10 Pin Alley today and rather than have virtual listeners just come in, shake hands and then take off, sat down, talked to the Backstreet Boys, then they spent a whole bunch of time uh, bowling with the guys. So here's Backstreet Boys with the Burt Show again. Every time they're in Atlanta, they're on the Burt Show. The Burt Show on all the hits Q100. <laughs> Welcome back, you guys. Thanks Good to for see having you guys. Again. Good to have you. Good to Thanks see for having you. us. This today was like the hot ticket for the last couple of days, man. I mean, people emailing and calling. I mean, as soon as we get in, people wanted to hang with you guys big time. Oh, man. That's cool. Awesome. Very cool. We want to see them too. Totally. Is it ever like surprising to you guys? I mean, just like, damn, I mean, we got staying power. I mean, people that they don't like dabble. We were talking about this. You don't dabble in digging the backstreet and uh, digging the backstreet boys. You just like, you love them forever. We do. We have some really, really, really truly supportive fans that have. I mean, it's amazing to see, like, the years that they've stuck behind us. You know, some of them, when we first started, you know, were, like, in their teens. Now some of them are, like, parents and bringing their kids around and stuff like that. It's like, you know, and, I mean, it's, you know, and we're blessed, you know, to truly have success, you know, around the world. I mean, even seeing fans over in Japan and, in, you know, in Europe and South America. And even when we, you know, even outside of the group, when we do charity work and stuff like that, you know, seeing them coming in from all around the world to come and hang with us. It's, like, it's, it's truly amazing how we've really, I guess, touched people's lives and, in a special way, I guess. We start to get those now where we get kind of offended about it, where people are like, yeah, I started listening to you guys in the fourth grade, man. <laughs> and now I'm celebrating my 20th wedding anniversary. <laughs> this is the greatest. You guys get those now? And you're like, man, yeah. we're getting old. Yeah. yeah, we've had a couple of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can I interrupt and ask Howie to blow out the candles on yeah. your cake? Yeah. Uh, you're going to melt into the cake. Well, first of all, thank you, guys. Well, that was really birthday, nice of you guys. Happy birthday, by the way. Uh, thank you. I think we should all sing happy birthday to Howie. Ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Howard Wayne Doro. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank okay, you. Thank hurry. you. Before thank you. Oh, it whoa. burns down. <laughs> big wish. A big wish. Make it big. All right. Yeah. yeah. Million sell, uh, million albums sold in the first week. Is that what, you're at? Is that what you went with first right week, there? big don't sales. Tell, don't tell. Don't tell. It won't come true. No, no. How old are you? Um. <clears throat> oh, you're at the I point am, where you're thinking uh, about uh, lying now. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I stopped at 30. No, I'm actually, believe it or not, 34 years old. 34. Yes. Well, happy birthday. Yeah, man. How does 34 feel? Feels great. I like getting a little jet lagged right now from this last couple of days of uh, plane traveling, but. Uh, it's crazy. Like, us going out, like, Nick busts my chop now all the times now. He's just like, dude, he's like, what's wrong, man? You can't <laughs> hang like you used to. And I'm like, it's the recovery time the next day. Yeah. Like, once I hit my 30s, it's, it's so different now. It's you know, like we in my 20s. About the it. studies that scientists do where they link, like, two random things. Like, somebody should come up with something useful, like the age yeah. to hangover cure time and, like, Put that on a graph so you know exactly going into it. If you go out in New <laughs> Orleans last night and celebrate till 3 a.m., <laughs> how long the next day you're worthless for? Right, right. and we could plan the off days. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yes. Our, plan our, our tour our days exactly that way. Yeah, that'd be really neat. That you're still not cool. slowing down at all, though. You're ready to go all 24/7. Oh me? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> single me out. No, honestly, I don't. I don't party as much anymore. Um, but since we've been out in the road and, and kind of just getting back, I mean, we, we, we'll go, Howie and I will go out with, you know, JR, our radio representative, and, and we'll just, uh, you know, meet people and go to certain bars or clubs and stuff like that and hang out. But it's not, like, crazy. I mean, it's, it's like, getting harder for me. I'm 27, you know what I mean, too? Old, bro. So, <laughs> yeah. It's getting harder for me, but... Wow, can yeah, I record sometimes you the saying that? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sometimes the hangovers at 27, like, last till yeah. 9 Dude, they're, morning. like, so yeah, hard, exactly, you know? Like two hours. <laughs> 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 Recovery time, yeah. <laughs> well, you got to grow up quick here now too, because you're engaged, right? Yes, I've just gotten engaged. Heard somebody go. Congratulations! Congratulations. They, 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 no, you thank, you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, not you. Dude. I, I figured fig, I don't worry about me. time was too long to be doing that party and crazy single yeah. stuff, so I got engaged. Yes. How'd you do it? 
Um, actually, I've been uh, with this person, believe it or not, for six years, and I kept it kind of like on the on the DL because um, I've always been very private about my you know my my, my social life um, outside of the group and stuff like that. But um, actually, uh, I went to her family's house in New Jersey on a New Year's Eve, and um, I proposed to her in front of all her family. And I was wow. it was so crazy. A friend of mine told me he's like, "You're going to be more nervous at this than probably at a concert." And it was literally like maybe like 40 people, but I felt like it was I was more nervous than like 40,000 people yeah. in front of performing. I mean, you have to be sure that she's going to say yes yeah. and have yeah. dated for right. six years before she you get no. in front of 40 <laughs> family members. That's right. right. She's doing it in front um, of her family, and she says no. That There's no bigger walk of shame yeah. Oh, yeah. as you walk out of that house with like... And it's an Italian family, so I was like... Oh. Got to watch out for the like, yeah. Now you know what's worse than that? And then you actually walking out is when the whole family walks out and leaves you guys alone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you're there right. all by yourself, man. Right, I mean, how he knows once he's in the family, there's no turning. I'm in back. the family. Yeah. It's Italian. Yeah, you're in. <laughs> did yeah. you ask Dad beforehand? Do the whole traditional thing? I actually thing? did. I actually believe it or not, I asked her mother um, to help me out because I was um, wanted to do like a little special kind of gag kind of thing because. I've always, like, you know, our ongoing joke is, like, you know, you always dangle the carrots in front of my face kind of thing. So I asked her mother if she would help me by getting a box of carrots, <laughs> like raw carrots. And, and literally at the right, like, five minutes before the strike of midnight, um, I, I, well, actually, right even before that, I asked her, her father and her grandmother, because her grandmother is, like, 94 years old and is a very special person in, in her life and has, you know, almost become, like, a, a grandmother of mine that I never had. And um, so, like I say, I got I told her, I said, there's one last gift I wanted to give to you really quickly. And she opened it up, this box of carrots. And everybody's like, huh? Like, what is this <laughs> box of carrots thing? And she's like trying to tell everybody. And by the time she turned around, I was down on one knee with the real carrots in my hand. Wow. And, uh, nice. So cool. It was, I'm trying to you patent, I'm trying to patent that little. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying yeah. to patent that little engagement thing. So if anybody else decides to do it, they can credit me, please. You know. Now, is she the type of bride? Like, you, you did that at midnight, obviously, on January 1st. And by noon, did she have the date, the location, the guest? Oh, yeah, list? we were already set up for the whole next Game 10 on. years. We were already just talking. Kids' no, names um, picked out, everything done. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I mean, we, we discussed a little bit the next day. Um, you know, it's obviously we're in the midst of trying to figure out, you know, timing-wise for everything because right now we're getting ready to start everything up with Backstreet Boys yeah. and, you know, and our whole promotion and touring. And, and um, it's going to be the next probably two years of my life are going to be a little bit crazy. Yeah. So we're, we're figuring out when's the right timing to do everything, the wedding, the, you know, we might even have to separate the honeymoon from the wedding and stuff like that. And so, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a, a new and exciting chapter in my life. Cool, man. So. Well, Nick Howie was saying that, uh, you know, he really tries to keep his private life private. Yours has been a little bit of a tougher challenge <laughs> over the years. A little bit of a tougher challenge for you. Is that, do you think that the media, why, why do you think the media has kind of like singled you out? Because it sure does seem... Like they like picking on you more than anybody else. Well, I, I think I'm the one that had uh, that was the youngest, and yeah. and I don't know. Maybe they knew I was going to go through some problems and hiccups, you know, on the way. Yeah. So maybe they singled me out because of that. But um, you know, I, I I mean that's the only answer I could say for that. But all the stuff that I have done, whether it be a reality show or date certain people, whatever. I mean, it's just kind of happened. It's, ne it's never like I ever planned it to to be some sort of. Uh, plot or anything to uh, draw attention it just happened the way and, and always and things um certain things that you know talking about the reality television show like you know good things happened out of it even though i didn't want to do another season of it because it was too much drama and too much yeah. pressure for me you know um but uh th good things came out of all the things that it were that were bad that happened to me 